this afternoon for our final panel of the, of the day. Yes. Um, as you can perhaps tell, I am unfortunately not Anita Dube. Um, I know it. <laughs> Um, and so, in, 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 in the context of the last panel where we were looking at the idea of mobility within uh, contemporary art practice, I think it's quite relevant that um, we talk about an international art world, but we often tend to forget or gloss over the fact that not all of us have the access to, I mean, have as much access to mobility or as, uh, as some of our Western colleagues might. And uh, for certain complications around. Uh, around these questions of access that um, Anita could not be with us today. So unfortunately you are here with me, but I will try my best to do justice to my fantastic panelists. So going from right next to me, we have Nazi Andali Prima, an amazing um, painter and performance artist whose work has uh, questioned um, issues of gender, sexuality in this country. Um, then right after that is Wasif Bhai, uh, Munem Wasif, an incredible experimental photographer, also a teacher at Pachala. And then um, next to Wasif Bhai is Russell Chaudhary, who um, was a, is, is a former laureate of the Sandani Art Award and a fantastic photographer in his own right. Um, and lastly, but certainly not least, Zihan Kari, whose work you can see just across the hall from here, uh, and is a an amazing videographer and works with the uh, works with the collective based in Chittagong, um, and Joe. So I'm going to invite uh, Prima to start uh, this evening's this afternoon's discussions. Um, so Prima, as, as I mentioned, is a painter and performance artist whose work revolves around challenging gender roles and gender identities in Bangladesh. And so one of the things that we want, I mean, to, to kind of lay out the ground for this panel and why it's important to have this discussion, um, as more and more international attention comes to Bangladesh, and this, this, and this goes back all the way to, to, to the 70s, uh, when Bangladeshi art was framed in a certain manner, um, I, I think we were talking yesterday about how um, in the 70s, you, you had a huge influx of photographers from abroad who were coming into Bangladesh seeking to represent it. And of course, they had a very orientalist vision, their practice, um, you know, subscribe to a sort of ornamental area model where it's all about the poverty and the desolation that they found. And um, institutions like Pachala, like Chobimala, were able to reframe, like reclaim uh, uh, modes of representation, modes of producing photography, modes of producing images of Bangladesh. And uh, the four panels we have have all uh, show extensively abroad and have also spent time abroad as in foreign residencies or uh, having lived abroad. So Prima um, has shown the 2016 uh, Fukuoka uh, in the in Fukuoka Asian Art Museum as part of the Triennial, yeah. also Studio Kura. And I'm going to pass the mic on to her, but also the, the open question around how um, her work around gender and sexuality, again, when you talk about you know, South Asia, this entire question of you know, I mean, I've heard this thrown about quite a bit, even, with, even within the walls of the sun at this time, talk about the entire question of you know, where the women are and where their voices are. So there's a particular framing that we use to talk about you know, I mean, gender and sexuality where there's an assumed loss of agency, there's an assumed um, abduction of agency, rather, which Prima's work um, very definitively challenged. So I would have further to pass it on to her. Yes. So, um, hello everyone. Thank you, Avinash. So, um, uh, actually, the thing is, it's it's a process. My work, as you mentioned, from painting to performance, it is a journey. It is a process that I follow over last twenty years now. So, while I'm following my process, uh, I believed in my philosophy and the context that I come in from, the experience that I gathered from my personal life and the society that gave me. So it is not planned to become who am I, what I what what is my expression of art would be. Rather it follow logically, creatively, aesthetically the way should it should be. So while doing that I noticed lately I started a work on feminism. I believe in feminism. I think this is a notion that is very important to uh, follow. 
as a as a particularly South Asian artist because here women are very dominated by the notion of the societal uh, structure and it is very stereotyped to be honest no matter what we see it is not the actual scenery so when I started in 2009 absolutely straight pointed to feminism, I noticed gradually from then to now, it is quite difficult for me to possess that I believe in, when in terms of sexuality, women, freedom of sexuality, express their sexual notion and their belief to their life as an individual. So it is very interesting for me to see that how I have, my work has been influencing the society, individual, and particularly the notion of religious extremism. So it is, it is quite encouraging for me to proceed with this more and more because I feel very challenged and censored. But the problem is that since it is highly challenging and highly restricted to come with this sexual notion as a, as a Bangladeshi artist nowadays, it is for me too difficult to go with the actual reality what I want to express. Rather, I need to censor. It, sometimes I need to censor my own work. I need to, as I mentioned, because I don't have to. So there is a constant struggle within me, with myself and my expression, that whether I should go this way, where I should improvise my work, to keep it going, or I should just challenge the norm and the extremism, whatever things that are going around. Like sometimes now, work my works are now challenged to be accurate by the uh, by the gallery, by the personnel, by the collectors, because they don't know if the notion of Bangladeshi art in future could determine that this is the art actually Bangladesh produced. So. There is a lot of interesting thing going on around uh, my work. So, it, but for me, it is very interesting that for me, it is very uh, encouraging that trying it, coming back and going to my uh, core. So it is the process. So I feel that since there is a, a, a constraint to this particular sexual women independence, I believe that disruption is important to uh, proceed with the work and I keep going on this. So that is my work process. Thank you. So um, before we move on to what I mean, uh, what, one of the questions I wanted to address to you, as, as we were discussing, you did, you did the residency in Fukuoka, and you mentioned uh, several times that you've been censored when showing work in Hatha. So my question is, how do you begin to reframe your work in, in, in a context such as Fukuoka? How do you see your work changing, and how do you how do you occupy the space of being a Bangladeshi female artist, you know, with all the sort of weight that that has within a context such as that? Great question. So, as you said, as you already mentioned, that when I come back doing this, uh, the, the Fukuoka uh, presentation was here, like it, it is incorporated here, if we can show it. There's this uh, intimacy conflict. It was a project that I was encounter. we were encountering, two women were encountering their body parts. So that was the uh, performance there. And I, even in Fukuoka, I noticed there is a resistance of this touching each other body and really grabbing them each other. So there also this village also, this is the one. So that was also give a little shock to the whole audience. So I think that is not, as an artist, they got shocked. Rather, I'm where I'm coming from, it was important to the people that from there, she's coming here, and this model, actually she's, the Japanese girl is a model who wanted to do the performance with me because he want, she wanted to feel the space, she wanted to feel the action. So she, she was really, uh, she was very supportive, to be honest. Her name is Ayami. So when I came back, as you mentioned, that I wanted to do it, as we always come back and perform or do the talk about it, but I was highly, res it was, the society was very resistant about this performance particularly. And I was being very bullied, uh, very, people were really kind of, they, they kind of mockery about the whole thing that you cannot do it here. That's the straight thing I heard that, 
oh, you cannot do it. If you do it here, you do it in a private party or sort of like this space. So it's been always treated as a subject of sarcasm, rather very serious notion of a country like Bangladesh, South Asia's country, Asian country should really highlight this issue because these issues are not meant for a joke. These issues are serious issues to address that artists should express that, um, that notion of restrain uh, surrounding an environment. It should be break broken. So here we are seeing this art summit, like a very contemporary cutting edge art festival which we are so proud of and there, out there, we are every day fighting for our right to be an uh, independent artist, whatever what we want to express is kind of very, very uh, paradoxic to me. So this notion uh, should be addressed and it's interesting for me to go with this topic and making a space where I can create this space to be, this is her, as I do, did her uh, photography. So it's, it's really, for, to me, sexuality is part of my life, part of everybody's life. It is not, it is not doing an act, it is a belief, it is what we are, it is the existence. And I feel that South Asian Muslim countries especially will be, have a, like, I don't know when, but they need to understand the notion of this. Um, so you mentioned that when you were in Fukuoka, you were, there was a, a particular craving for the work, and when you came back here, you were encouraged to do it in more private context. So I mean, my question is, how do you frame your public? I mean, who, do you, who do you call your public across these different contexts, and how did this performance evolve for these, for these different audiences? But I think everybody is my audience, to be honest. And for my art, I don't really particularly target uh, a particular audience, is if that is what you want to know. And I don't want to, yeah. So I don't want to frame it in a particular way. It just go the way I want to possess the word, to possess the uh, the experience, to be honest. So it it would just go the way I want and the way I express it through my experiences. Thank you. Okay, so we're going to make this quite an open platform where conversations can go across, uh, across panelists as well as across the audience. So if at any point any of you want to interject, make an intervention here, please, you're most welcome to just raise your hand. Yes, please. Thank you. I've um, been really enjoying the insights. So my question is for Nazia and Ali Prima. Um, I've observed uh, and admired your series of visual art. One of my favorite series is A Staring Woman. But I'd like to know what makes me curious is the disruption that you create from one piece to another. What is the inspiration or motivation you have behind that? Like one line, to be honest. Like that, like to be, to be, to continuously be in your process, disruption is the only thing that you can follow to go to the next level. That's it. Thank you so much. Um, okay, so we're going to move on now to Wasif Hi. Um, so, Munim Wasif, as we mentioned before, is an experimental photographer and, and also a prolific teacher at the Pachala Academy. Um, to give a bit of context about Pachala, Pachala was uh, a fantastic. Um, um, Educational Institute and Experiment uh, created by some of we have, we're privileged to have with us today, uh, Shahid Al Alam. And it was, an, it was one of the first great experiments of how to reclaim the, uh, the, the, uh, the framing of South Asia from uh, a, largely West, uh, a largely Western author. Um, Munir Wasif's practice has to a large extent reframed the way we understand the landscape. And I'm going to take this as, as an example uh, two works that are here in the summit, uh, See Each That Is Free and uh, Machine Matters, as well as the work he's shown at the summit and widely abroad, um, which is called Land of Undefined Territory, um, which looks at the border between India and Bangladesh and the, the various economies of material, of labor, and capital that flow in and out of that in, in, a, in, a, in a 
informal manner, in an unrecognized manner. Um, so, I mean, the question of landscape, the question of how we understand landscape is something that I think connects both you and Russell's practice. But I would invite you to look, I mean, to invite you to discuss um, the, the, the forays that you made and the experiments um, that, you've, that have um, facilitated the evolution of this practice. Um, I think it's a very complex uh, topic to begin with. Uh, I think we live in a country where thousands of layers, uh, thousands of differences, uh, thousands of divisions. Um, so when, I, when we say we are talking about Bangladesh, um, we also need to be specific um, which Bangladesh we are talking about. Um, are we referring to the hill tracks? Uh, are we talking about the labor rights? Are we talking about the millions of women who are struggling every day in the governments? Um, like there are different kind of notions. Bangladesh is not a static place, and I think stereotypes is all about uh, representations and the politics of representations. What we show, how we think, and what we don't uh, show in our work. Uh, I would like to refer to a very famous uh, um, British author called Stuart Hall, who have extensively work on. Uh, these politics of representations and the black uh, body. Um, so he has a, he always said that a black photo with a black camera not necessarily will take a black picture. Um, so just because uh, we live here doesn't mean uh, we live here. I think the world has become extremely complex. Uh, the boundaries are getting broken. The Middle East is the uh, perfect example, you know. Um, like we don't know where Iraq starts and where Iraq ends. We don't know where is Palestine. We don't know where is Egypt. Um, half of the world is burning, you know. So this whole notion of states uh, are need to be uh, we need to ask these questions again. Um, and also um, keeping in mind that the kind of uh, practice we do, I think there is also a um, question of existence. Um, like um, like brands, you know, we have a lot of famous artists who are producing the same kind of work for ages. Uh, it's also because uh, uh, there are certain collectors who would like to buy the same kind of work again, again and again, you know. So it's not only about the artists, it's also about the kind of environment we are living in. So it's not one-handed. Um, on the other hand, I think um, we need to actually ask us uh, um, critical questions all of the time. Uh, a lot of times I think we get very happy when we have exposure abroad, but I have, um, I have a quite a bit problem, you know, when we, like now, maybe in Pompidou, if you were this year, some years back, there was an India show, uh, there's an Africa show, there's a Mexico show, there's a China show, uh, but very few times we see an American show in Bangladesh or a British show in Bangladesh, you know. How we, um, when there will be a time when we will see Britain from our eye, you know, from a Bangladeshi perspective. Uh, so uh, who is framing whom, you know, is also extremely important, you know. Uh, the canon, the perspective. Um, yeah. So I think you mentioned something that's very, very interesting, which is, uh, which is to do with this idea of relocating Bangladesh. You, you could, I think that to what you're talking about, you're completely shifting the geography of where you, what one, might, one might imagine Bangladesh beginning or ending, in fact. I mean, you're talking about how uh, Bangladesh might begin to uh, reframe, um, uh, reframe um, the, the Middle East, the West Reframe, eat, uh, reframe Africa, and one of my I mean, one of the things we've uh, sort of been in discussion with about as well is that when we, I mean, to a large extent, we're talking about the framing of um, of Bangladeshi art as well as art from um, other, um, you know, ex-colonial countries, etc. We've been talking about the way that it's been framed in the West, whereas all, I mean, almost all the artists on this panel have shown not just in institutions in Europe or America or. Uh, or, uh, you know, or, or 
and what's largely called the West, but also institutions in Asia. So my question to you is how do you locate, um, how do you locate, locate your own practice uh, within, this shift, within this shifting, um, within the shifting lens that it tries to put you in? I don't think this is my job. You know, somebody else will look at my work and analyze, critic, whatever they want to do. But I quite get bored with my own work, so I constantly like to shift and uh, create a certain kind of uncomfortable position where I feel vulnerable. So I think vulnerability is extremely important, important for artists. Um, and I think uh, it's. I think uh, teaching is also extremely problematic. So I'm teaching for quite a long time, and I think. Uh, the more you teach, uh, you, you, especially in a country like Bangladesh, India, and Pakistan, you get in a very authoritative position where everybody calls you sir, 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 and that puts you in a position where you feel like you're an expert, actually you don't know anything because the world has shifted so much that you have no idea where the world has moved, you know. Um, so um, I think the best word for me nowadays is recalibrating because, you know, uh, we use Mac. And um, every time we plug the Mac into a projector, we have to recalibrate our Mac because you don't see the same black anymore. Uh, so you have to manually calibrate. So when we look at our work, I think we have to constantly recalibrate ourselves and see where we are. So um, yeah, so I think having a mirror, mirror uh, in front of yourself uh, philosophically is extremely important. Um, um, I don't know, I think, um, like, um, I think, you know, when you look at this summit, I think there are a lot of beautiful examples, you know, a lot of people might not notice it carefully, like there's an the exhibition on Sri Lanka, you know, there are 100 artists from Sri Lanka. Uh, when do we get to see artists from Sri Lanka and Bangladesh, you know, never. We see French artists, British artists, Spanish artists. Why? Because they have all their embassy and they have funds, you know. But we don't get never funds to bring an artist from Vietnam, you know. We never get a fund to bring an artist from Senegal, you know. I'm part of a festival that me, Alumbai, and few of us curate. And this is a constant struggle, you know. How we show work of other countries, you know, south to south. We need to build a different kind of uh, network. Uh, one of my very close friends, Nain Mohammed, you know, he just made a film on these non-aligned countries. Uh, like, if you look at 60s, there was still a hope, you know, there was supposed to have a big conference in Algeria or the African countries, Muslim countries. But now we live in a world where we um, always want to go to Paris, but to some extent, Paris is almost like a 19th century museum box dead city, you know, nothing happens there. Um, um, sorry, I'm, I'm, I hope I'm not hurting anyone. Um, but um, yeah, and I think uh, when I started to teach, you know, the first thing I have done, uh, I've told my told the students that um, you can't just repeat the old school. So the strong tradition of photography was in Bangladesh was everybody was taking beautiful black and white pictures. So the first rule was you can't take any more any black and white pictures, just as exercise. So start from opposite and see what happens. And when you really know where you are, you can go back. So, um, and also, you know, when we, um, when somebody, uh, like I have done a big project on Islam, um, the project called In God We Trust, is a symbolic name that you see in American dollars. And I work with a French agency, which is based in Paris. But I'm very careful about how my photographs are being represented because a lot of times um, you put your work online and you don't have any control. So I think we need to have authority over our work and we need to know how, how our work is being represented in different places. And also I work on long-term projects. So eight years back when I started the project, the situation of Bangladesh was very different and then Shahbak happened, then Hefazot happened, then a lot of things happened. So I really need to um, reposition myself and look at the history from various perspectives because um, things shifted. Yeah. So it's not a constant position. Like to be in the river, you know, you're constantly moving. I mean, 
and um, going back to something, I mean, there's so many questions I'm going to ask, but I want to start with talking about um, this work that you mentioned in God We Trust, which is an incredibly, it's an incredibly sensitive work, I mean, in terms of its, I mean, the way that it has to be presented. Could you talk a little, I mean, I wonder if you could, because I know there's a lot of members of the audience who will not be familiar with it, uh, if you could talk a little bit more about the work itself and its presentation and how you maintain this uh, space of criticality uh, with its presentation as well. That's something actually very simple that sometimes we don't look at. So I live with my father, I have a sister, I have a wife, I have a son, and we fight with each other all the time because uh, we have a very different take on our world, you know. Uh, my wife is an actress, my father is a lawyer, my sister is a doctor, I'm a photographer. But we have very different kind of perspective on religion or the kind of practice we have in, in Bangladesh. So it's all about having multiple voices, you know, it's all about showing the dots in between, you know, the grey dots, so it's not black, it's not white, but there's so many dots in between, and most of the time when we show something, we have a quite extreme positions, and the voices in between get lost, so it's about having a very deep tonality, you know, where you can, you can, you can, where I'm actually interested to, uh, raise questions rather than giving answers, you know, rather than giving solutions. You know, let's talk. That's it. As we be showing a very crowded place and we have some intention to do what actually we want to do or maybe I want to do. Me and my another three members, maybe some of are there, we actually try to break the uh, tradition uh, from the white cube gallery or the other things and we just try to make a platform for the new newcomer to make uh, the, I mean, to do the experiment, like new media in Chittagong. And yeah, this is a very open platform, it's a street show, and that's the very first time we initiate, uh, I mean, we take initiative to make a size specific show there, and I made my, another video art, and that, that was like, really, I mean, can I show the, another video, the first one? Actually, for the very first time, I tried to interact with the people. You can see that projection is uh, uh, the, the name of the work is Simple Death. It's about a daily labor. I actually used to sleep in the street side in Charagi, and I used to uh, make his sketches when I was in the students. And suddenly, I found that he is. I found him. He is dead in the in that street side, and I found that the people are not so concerned about this. So I thought maybe if, if I make a video and project it on the floor in the middle of the road, what, how actually people will interact with that video and what actually they interact with that, that reality. It's like a absurdity, reality, something like between this. So, yeah, I mean, you can see some, uh, like, sometimes people feel scared, sometimes people are uh, running on it and sometimes we have to actually, through my work, I'm talking about how we actually interact with the people and about the show because in that time, I had to face a lot of problems about the video. I mean, the, uh, like one rickshaw, I can remember he, he was watching that video maybe 20 or 15 minutes, and after that, he felt very bored and he said, When will the cinema start? And I, and I have to answer him that, I mean, it's, maybe it's not like a cinema, it's like uh, di different things. I have to tell him the stories and 
Maybe he can understand. I don't know actually. So, so I, in my first video, I was said I was confused. So in my second video and through that show, actually I I felt like I mean as an artist, as a I mean how actually I have to act like a artist and also activist and also maybe. Uh, some other things I have to, I, I mean, I have to do, and as an artist, I have a lot of responsibilities. And day by day, I just started to think like this. So this is about the 2012 what I faced, and 2014 actually, I just first uh, introduced. No, uh, no, sorry. Um, in 2013, the I first introduced one curator. So the curation world actually, I learn from actually that initiate when I when I was selected at Fukuoka for the Fukuoka Shinali 2014. So the curator came and we talked about a lot, a lot of things, work and and I have seen the curatorial point and I mean how they actually uh, how the curation curator do and how the curator work actually. Before that I have not so many I not so idea about the curation. So and I've seen that, I don't know, it's, uh, I've seen, uh, after that I've met a lot of curator, but about the curate, curation and curator, uh, I mean the curator, if I pick a word as a curator, so um, I've, sometimes I felt like it's a, uh, in, the, in, the, in the word curation, the artist is very alone, I felt like, because uh, before that, for us, like we, I am the artist, I am the curator, I am the displayer, I am the audience sometimes, and I have to arrange all those things. And, all the, and but the, after the curation, then the artist maybe he will just produce some ideas only. Then you don't have to do anything. <laughs> so that was also a little confusing for me. So physically, am I absent through the work, or, or this is the way actually? So and also I met a lot of curators that they have their own point of view to uh, present the work and sometimes some curators like uh, uh, they are very focused on my focused on my artistic lifestyle or not my work. They are choosing the artist actually. I mean it's like man specific, not the art specific. Something like that. and someone like just pick my work. Maybe they say some some biennale or something like. That. So. In that time, also a little bit confused, and and through day by day, like these days, I I, I think that the 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 word the actually we are talking about some stereotypes. So I don't know. My, nowadays, it actually broke up. I mean, the, there's no stereotypes. Something like beyond curation and artist and art practice, actually. So it's actually mostly depend on the curator, mostly that what actually he needed and also depend on the artist actually what is his point of view and what he's doing as an activist. It's not I mean depend on that I have to do something that people will like and curator will like. So I mean this way I'm just going on. Um, unfortunately we're running short of time. Uh, now, so I'm going to open the floor directly to questions, but also keep this conversation going. So, do we? Yeah. Yes. Um, thank you very much for your presentations. They were really um, great to see and hear. Um, I am a little bit confused about the, still about the notion uh, of stereotypes of Bangladeshi art, and that's why I wanted to ask: How do you see the relation um, between the stereotypes of Bangladeshi art to the stereotypes of global global art? Can you like, can you imagine like? Uh, it's it's a question to whoever wants to answer. Um, I'm just still trying to like imagine or decipher. The stereotype of Bangladeshi art, because it's a, uh, it's a, uh, yeah. What I've seen so far, it's a. Uh, there are like uh, really good, extreme, well, practices of professional contemporary art. That's why I'm still like trying to think. Okay, what what are the stereotypes of Bangladeshi art, and why actually, to even like, 
what's behind this title of like you know of even imagining the stereotypes of Bangladeshi art? <laughs> well, the, the, I'll answer a little bit. Uh, this stereotype, this word, actually, it's very interesting. So we have our stereotype, like the outer world have their own stereotype. So it needs to blend together. So it when it not blend together, it have to reject one another, to be honest. If we want to go to a new, if you want to create a new perspective, I think we need to really reject each other's stereotype notion. Because like, when, when Western see us, the Western art world see us, they kind of certain, they have a certain perspective to see us. So like if I want to talk about my art, I also uh, I already shared it with uh, Obi just a little bit uh, before Obi la Obi John. Okay, that's a nice thing. So uh, before that, uh, when they see my work, especially curators from abroad, they kind of like sometimes even galleries, <coughs> they kind of like don't believe that I come from there. If either I am not telling the truth when I'm story storytelling through my work, or they're kind of not having the right uh, direction for my country or my environment or my society. That is the stereotype for them. So in context of my stereotype or our stereotype is we never showcase or have the courage to project that we feel we should project. We always kind of 